Hi, you're listening to Book Chat with author Vivian E. Moore. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode. We really appreciate you joining us. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn, live, and thrive off of each other. By sharing our knowledge through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. Hello and welcome to Book Chat. I am your host, Dr. Vivian Moore. I hope everyone had a great week. I hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, I know that it is, um, depending on where you are, it's a little wet, um, and there may be some storms, uh, coming because of, I think it's a tropical depression they're calling it. Um, but some places it's worse than others, but for us, we just have a lot of, of, um, just some light rain. Uh, but you know, it's not a total washout and hopefully, um, it'll all be over with before, uh, tomorrow, which is father's day. So, um, we're looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. I'm wishing my, my, uh, my ex-husband and my sons, uh, happy father's day as well as my brothers and, um, some of my nephews, uh, and also my, um, my church family. I want to wish all of them happy Father's Day. So, um, so let's get uh, started on today's show. All right. The title of today's show is The A-Team. And the topic is my top 10 summer reading list. You know, it's hard to believe, but summer is upon us <laughs> once again. And uh, now that uh, vaccines are available for covid and uh, more people have already taken the right step to help lessen uh, COVID. Some of you have made plans to travel or not, instead opted uh, for a staycation. Well, a little reading seems appropriate. Um, even if you intend to jet off to some exotic location, uh, cruise or chill out by the pool, let me suggest a few of my favorite books uh, from my summer reading list. And these are books that left a lasting impression on me. And what better way to show some appreciation for the authors is to share these titles uh, with you today. Now, I'm starting from number 10 and working my way to number one. So let's get started. So number 10 is Every Value Break by Peter Swanson. Um, it is a psychological thriller um, that did not disappoint, but will make you question chance encounters and if anyone is perfect. Well, we know that no one is perfect, but still, you know, sometimes in relationships, you think you found that one and it turns out to be uh, <laughs> something entirely different. All right. So that was number 10. So number nine is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Uh, this is YA fiction and it is an instant New York Times bestseller. Uh, it's also addictive. Uh, it's a must read mystery that questions if a serial killer is afoot or, in a, or is it an obsession going wrong? So uh, it's called The Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Um, and it, it sounds sort of weird, uh, the title, but honestly, it's a very good book. So I highly recommend this book that you read it. It's, again, it's YA fiction, so it's appropriate for your teens uh, to read this book as well, despite the title. All right, number eight is um, The Push by Ashley Audrain. And uh, it is also a Good Morning America book, uh, Good Morning America book club pick, and it's also another New York Times bestseller. So uh, this psychological drama uh, had me on the edge of my seat, wondering if bad parenting was at hand or if a mother uh, birthed the demon seed. Um, you know, the title says it all, The Push. Um, this the, the little girl in this story reminds me of, uh, I don't know if you've ever uh, seen the movie, uh, The Good Son. Well, this book sort of, you know, it sort of threw my mind back to that, to that movie. 
um, with uh, oh, his first name is Elijah. I can't think what his last name is, but Macaulay Calkin is in this book, and uh, and <laughs> he is definitely not the good son. So um, it's just it's something you might want to to read. It's, it was a good book. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I think you will too. But uh, you know, the you really don't get to to discover um, what actually happened or if it is true uh, to the very end. All right, so number seven is The Good Sister by Sally Hepworth. And it is a suspense, a thriller suspense. And, you know, I love how this story explores explores the dual narratives of two sisters. Um, and it is true suspense with varying stories and plot twists. Now, I'll bet you have a hard time uh, determining who's the good or bad sister like I did, uh, especially with the, with the dual, um, narratives. Um, <laughs> it, one sister you think is, um, the one that is, is so helpful and, and caring than the other sister, um, you think maybe just the tad bit touched in the head and possibly, um, you know, a, a, a serial killer or perhaps has the, um, you know, has the, um, potential, if you can call that potential, um, to be something other than, you know, good. But, uh, but anyway, it was a great book and I truly enjoyed it. And I know you will too. And again, it's called the good sister. All right. So, uh, number six is one by one by Ruth Ware. And it is another suspense thriller. And it's also another New York times bestseller. And this book reminded me of Agatha Christie's book, and then there were none. Now, I don't know if you've, if you've read the book or if you've seen the movie, but, um, it, it's very good. And, and it, it bore, um, her suspenseful writing style. And, uh, but anyway, it takes place on a snow covered mountain, uh, with eight guests and two full-time staff members. And one of them is a killer. And uh, all I can say about this book is just expect the least expected. Um, you know, they the setting is is perfect for you know for this type of story. And uh, you know, you have nowhere to go. Uh, you're snowed in. What do you do? You know, when people are starting to end up dead, you know, one by one. So um, I really enjoyed this book, and I think that it will it could possibly uh, you know be an okay movie if someone wanted to explore that avenue of making it into a movie. All right. So number five is Behind Her Eyes, and this book is by Sarah. Pen Barrel. Um, and it's also a New York Times bestseller and a Netflix movie. All right. So someone has already taken that idea to the next level and made a movie out of it. And it's also uh, an eerie thriller that reminded me of The Skeleton Key that was written by Anthony Horowitz. And that was also a movie. Um, it had, um, oh, what is that young lady's name? Oh, what is her name? Good gosh. I wish I could remember her name. Uh, what is that child's name? Hold on. I'm, I, I can't leave it alone until I find out what her name is. Let's see. Um, what is her name? What is this? Um, Kate Hudson. I knew it would come back to me. Kate Hudson. Uh, she is in this movie. Uh, it came out, I think in 2005 and it was listed under, uh, under horror is how they uh, listed that particular story. But it, that, um, it reminds me so much of, um, of the skeleton key, um, behind her eyes reminds me so much of the skeleton key. Um, and it, I mean, it explains why it's a New York times bestseller because it deserves to be there. And so you need to check it out. It's good. It's not what you think. Um, it, uh, the, uh, the, narr well, I listened to it, uh, from audible and of course the narration is, is British, but that's okay. It's still a good book. And, uh, and I, and I think you will thoroughly enjoy it as much as I did. Um, <laughs> I, let me just say Stephen King liked it. So you will love it as much as I did. And trust me, there is a whole lot of weirdness in this book. Uh, and it is filled with mind games. And when you think you figured it out, wait for the mind blowing in. All right. All right. So number four is the cousins by Karen M McManus. And this is another YA fiction. 
that starts slow but builds to become a true suspense filled with dirty little secrets and switched identities. Um, you just have to read the book to find out more about it. I don't want to give too much away, but, uh, but it's a great book. It's a good story. And I think it will be great for your, for your teenagers. You know, if you have preteens, maybe, you know, the age of 12 to own up to maybe 16 to 17, they will probably, uh, more or less enjoy this book because it is designed for, um, you know, kids in, in their age is, is young adult fiction and uh and it's okay for adults to read it because i read it and i enjoyed it so that's why i'm sharing it all right so number three is the echo wife by sarah gailey now this is science fiction at its best and if you are a sci-fi fan then you'll want to add this book to your list okay so cheating husbands has nothing on multiplicity if you've ever seen that movie uh where this guy has himself cloned to become um, you know, um, everything that his wife needs. And, and also he did it so he could, um, you know, be the family man and also be the businessman because his life was just hectic that way. But anyway, he thought it was a good idea to have himself cloned. Well, this book sort of goes in that direction, but only it's not the guy being cloned. Uh, it's the, the wife, uh, which makes this story, uh, morally questionable and different in a not so bad, weird direction okay but uh but you'll have to read it for yourself and uh it was the, this book was so good and i may read it again maybe later on maybe you know toward the end of the year when i just run out of things that that interest me and just want a good book to read one that i've read before um, the Echo Wife will more than likely be that book because it was so good and so well written. All right. So number two is Little Fires Everywhere. And this book is by Celeste Nick. Her last name is spelled N-G and I hope that's how you pronounce it. But anyway, it's literature fiction and it's also, wait for it, a New York Times bestseller. And it's also a Netflix movie that's out there now. Now I haven't seen the movie yet. But I read this book and, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those books where everyone has secrets, but you know, what would you do to cover them up? And each character in this book has something that they're hiding. So, you know, this, this book left my stomach in knots and, but it was good to the end. And, uh, so now that I've read the book, I actually want to watch that Netflix movie to see if it lives up to, you know, to the, to the book. Um, you know, see how much they've changed or if the storyline, you know, keeps that, that same plot in that same direction. But, um, uh, but I thoroughly, um, enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, and I, and I know you will too. I hope you will too. And if you haven't saw the movie yet, read the book first before you actually see the movie. Um, cause a lot of times, you know, when they do book to movies, um, it's, you know, things get lost in translation and I hope that this doesn't happen. And I really don't want to critique it yet since I haven't seen the movie yet, but the book was good. It was, it was, it was everything. Let me just tell you that it was so good. All right. So number one is the perfect marriage by Geneva Rose. And she spells Geneva with a J instead of a G and it is a mystery thriller and suspense. Well, hell, hell has no fury as a woman scorned. All right. So this book took revenge <laughs> to an entirely new level. And, uh, you know, on top of that, it was well written. Uh, it had an excellent plot and the characters were so convincing. Um, I felt some kind of way about it. Um, you know, but, I, but all in all, I love this book and I know you will too. But, you know, it had me guessing until the end about who killed the scorned wife's husband's lover. Uh, you know, they, they pegged that said that the husband did it. But, you know, you have to read to find out what really happened. All right. So that is my top 10 books for uh, the summer uh, reading list. Um, I hope you had time to jot down each and every title. And if you didn't get the chance to jot down the titles, I'm going to give them to you again. And, uh, and the, also the author name. So you won't have a, have any trouble, uh, finding these books for yourself. All right. So number 10 is every value you break by Peter Swanson. Number nine is a good girl's guide to murder by Holly Jackson. Number eight is the push 
by Ashley Audrain. Uh, number seven is The Good Sister by Sally Hepworth. Number six is One by One by Ruth Ware. Number five is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinbarrow. And number four is The Cousins. Number three, The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. Let me go back to number four, The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. McManus, that's right. Number two is Little Fires Everywhere. And that book is by Celeste Nick. And then number one, The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. All right. So before I let you go, I want to make sure I give you these URLs so you can stay in contact with Book Chat as well as, uh, you know, look me up online. But anyway, uh, today's uh, show is recorded uh, live. So if you missed the live version, you can just go to the recorded episodes and listen to it that way as well. All right, so the first one is, of course, the Spreaker. It is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash author Vivian E. Moore. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, but Instagram is by invitation only, all right? And also, uh, if you um, want to uh, read today's transcript, you can view it on my blog, and that is at https colon forward slash forward slash vivianemore.blogspot.com, all right? And also, these are the other places where you can listen to book chat. Uh, of course, Spreaker, um, Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, CastBox, Deezer, Podcast Attic, Podchaser, YouTube, SoundCloud, Giles Saban, Audible.com, Verbal, that's spelled V-U-R-B-L, and Luminary. All right, so those are all the places where you can keep in touch with uh, book chat and you know when you go out there and listen to the show listen to these episodes make sure to like and to follow and to share all right it's just that simple all right so tomorrow again is father's day it's also worship day and uh, i just want to make sure that everyone is staying safe uh, because of this pandemic that is still going on, okay? So we still have to be safe. If you haven't got vaccinated yet, you still need to be safe, wear your mask, and, you know, and make sure you social distance because that is very, very important. And uh, and also, uh, you know, be mindful of all the dads tomorrow to wish them Happy Father's Day um, because they are deserving. And I always say, you know, without dads, we couldn't be mothers. Um, I know some people may argue that point because, you know, for one reason or another. But anyway, I, I, I'm traditional. And so I'm saying that because I am traditional. All right. But also uh, remember to tell those around you how much you care about them because tomorrow is not always promised. And that's why I always say, um, I love you. I hope you love me back. Until the next time you hear my voice, God bless you and goodbye. Loved what you've heard on this week's episode? Well, the answer is simple. It would mean the world to us if you could head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review and feedback. Spreading the word really is the best way to grow our podcast and achieve even greater things. Thank you. Thank you.